I'm sorry about all this uh, cloak and dagger stuff and this, because this is a secret mission, this. Which is why we're wearing these disguises. Big secret thing, we're going to a very, very small island and news spreads like wildfire and we don't want to get any out. So you're not going to be recognised, OK? Small island, more sheep than people, and it's a bit chilly, so I hope you've got your long johns. We must be going north. What, my York mates? Oh, I hope not. We're on an 18-hour flight to the Falkland Islands on board an RAF TriStar of 216 Squadron and it's a real treat to hide out in the cockpit for part of the way at least. Look Mum, no hands. Approaching the Falklands there's a fighter escort, not in our honour, but on a training mission in case they're called upon to force down a hijacked airliner. down there with the white sandy beaches? That's uh, Port Stanley. That's where the only airport on the island used to be until they built the Mount Pleasant airfield. So we have to drive all the way back from there, 35 miles, to Stanley? Yes. It, it's not the M1. <laughs> but the airport's separation from the island's main settlement is no real comfort to an undercover gardener. News of ground forces landing in the Falklands could well reach Stanley before we do. That's because although this flight carries mostly service personnel, and if a secret isn't safe with them, then who can you trust? It's also an air bridge between the Falklands and the UK, carrying islanders, tourists, fresh provisions, and quantities of gossip, too. Go! They said it was windy. I'm glad I took my moustache off. It'd have blown it off. Our mission is to transform the garden at the King Edward VII Memorial Hospital in Stanley, surprising, if possible, Norma Edwards, an islander with strong links with the hospital. She lives out of town, but we've just heard she's in Stanley until tomorrow night. So until dusk falls, we've to hide in our hotel before meeting Norman McGregor Edwards, our contact. Hello. You're not Norman. <laughs> no, I'm not Norman. I'm Norman. Norman. That's Emma. Emma, Emma. Well, nice to meet you. Who are you, Emma? Which is I'm, thing to I'm say Norma's also. daughter. Now, be straight with me. Does she know? She really doesn't know. No idea? None whatsoever. Oh, goodness for that. I'm glad somebody's uh, been capable of knowing what's going on. <laughs> Norman, we need to go where we're going. We'll go and have a look at the garden, shall we? Oh, lovely. Nice and sheltered. It's excellent, isn't Wonderful. it? Wonderful. And a pretty blank canvas. It's got some nice rocks. It has got some nice rocks. I thought we'd build on that, really, because I want it to kind of reflect the Falklands history mm -hmm. and the Falklands present. So what I've gone for is this. In a way, it's sort of symbolic of the Falklands past, really, because the centre of it is a compass rose. The point's done in cobbles, north-south, east-west, uh, with this kind of gazebo over the top of it. So that becomes the focal point at the centre of the garden. There are paths on all sides, so you can get access to this garden. Lots of planting, but quite tough planting because of the wind here, even though it is sheltered in here. Um, and then four geysers. Are we bringing more over from Hackney then, or what? Not diamond geysers, water geysers, squirts. <laughs> Yeah, from Acne. Might <laughs> 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 ruin the day he said that. <laughs> Next morning, and we've a whole day to kill. Before Stanley stirs, the forces have come to rescue us from 12 hours of hiding in our hotel rooms. We're being whisked away out of town to look for some of the Falklands famed wildlife. So our first real view of Stanley is from the air.
The blue roofed complex is the hospital with the courtyard garden in the middle that we're itching to get on with. But that's exactly where Norma is today, visiting her mother who lives in the sheltered housing attached to the hospital. At some risk, our crew's there too. But Emma's persuaded her mum that it's for a film about how things have changed since the conflict with Argentina 20 years ago. First question, how many generations could they trace their family back as islanders? Well, it's the sixth generation, isn't it, mm -hmm. now? Yes. Granny Fell, Granny Coots, right? Oh, Granny yes. Granny Porter, you, me, Emma. Six, by my, my fingers. Yes, that's right. Get them mixed up. <laughs> So, so how has life changed? The biggest change, I think, uh, was the advent of the telephone for the, for the rural community because uh, we only had radio telephones before then. And um, so you kept very closely connected because everybody listened to the, to the radio telephone. It was on in the corner all day long. So you knew everybody's business. <laughs> down to what they ordered from the store. And I loved it because uh, in, the, uh, in the morning, half past eight in the morning to nine o'clock was the doctor's half hour. So you had the doctor's half hour with breakfast, you see, and the doctor would go down to the radio shack and everybody would phone in and ha have a consultation. So it was all very, very public. <laughs> Since the conflict with Argentina, much has changed for the two and a half thousand islanders. Not least the building of the base at Mount Pleasant, where Royal Navy, Army and Air Force personnel are stationed as a deterrent against any threat of invasion in the future. That's to ensure that as long as the islanders continue to desire the right to remain British, then they can. The only thing that we do not provide for ourselves is our, our defence, and that costs less than one percent of the annual defence budget. So it's not, I don't think, vast quantities of money. And uh, from the, the defence point of view, they do have an excellent training ground, which, and nobody minds if they do any low flying and so on, which is a great plus, actually, for the military. Somebody asked a little girl once, you know, don't you dislike all the noise of the planes? And this child said, it was shortly after the, the conflict, and she said, no, that to us is the sound of freedom. And it still is. Our first day in the garden, and guess what? It's turned out nasty again. Oh, look at that! We've started. <sighs> Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Later. <laughs> oh, lovely, the snip saw. Sling that on there. Snip saw. Now, we do have a problem here in the Falkland Islands. There are no trees. So, see this? This has been shipped all the way from the UK. Hi, hello Charlie. Alright, now you're Tim, aren't you? Yes, that's right. What's yeah. the soil like here? It looks um, quite solid. Very hard and solid, yes. Right. I actually rotivated this and laid this, sowed this grass seed here about 10 or 11 years ago. And there was old building blocks and bedsteads and all sorts came out of it then. So oh, so you've got them all out? Some of them. Oh, no! <laughs> no right. doubt we'll find more today. Oh, good, good, fantastic. Right, a bit more turf to come up yet, though, right. before we get to okay. that stage. Yes, I'll take the other barrow away. All right. So whereabouts do you want this hole? A uh, little bit nearer to you. A bit to your left. Yeah, about there. 
Right, this will be interesting. I'll be all right in about another two hours. I'll have recovered. Darling. <laughs> Hello. Who are you? I'm from the local newspaper, Lisa Adele. We're oh, called Hello, Penguin Lisa. News, we're called. Oh, right. Very original. <laughs> <laughs> I've got something here that I wanted to show you because it's relevant to what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is our paper. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, just before Christmas, we, um, we did a Christmas special and yeah. we asked lots of local people, councillors, teachers, what they wanted for Christmas. And John Farrow, the headmaster of the Infant Junior School, said he wanted you in his garden. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yeah. And we couldn't give him the real thing, so we put a picture in, but it was a bit fuzzy. It seems that ground force gets shown here on the British Forces Broadcasting Channel. So, never one to resist the chance to actually come face to face with a possible fan, Charlie's surprising Mr Farrow in his lunch hour. Merry Christmas, John. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm slightly disappointed, though, I was only the third choice. Oh, oh. goodness <laughs> gracious. Sheila, look at this. I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> and what have you come to do? I've just come to say Merry Christmas to you, and now I'm not doing your garden. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen We're it? We're busy doing another yeah. one at the moment. Yes. <laughs> We're at the moment in the process of doing the hospital courtyard area. So yeah. we're doing that to surprise Norma. It's very yeah. difficult to keep secrets here. You know? We're cottoning onto this one <laughs> rapidly. <laughs> but I'm glad you've tackled something reasonable because I think this would be a year's job. Yeah. It looks quite pretty with all the grasses, eh? Well, that's what I'm trying to it's the natural touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 ah! it's breaking. It's breaking. It's breaking. Ah, the wind! This was the problem. Did we catch it in time? I mean, it was supposed to lift that way. That's why you put the straps that way. The straps are supposed to support it, and one at each side. Oh, yes. Yes. So we should well, have flipped it. Well, he told us to flip it that way. Who said flip it that you, way? You! You! <laughs> <laughs> you can't get professionals to work with you these can't. days, can you? <laughs> How was your headmaster? Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Six foot four, 23, yeah. stunning. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> What's that holly bush? It's quite important. It's <laughs> nine hours on. Right hand down. Right. That's about right. What I do need to do, though, is to check north, south, east, and west for the compass points, so we might have to turn it slightly. Right. Is that magnetic north or true north? <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> Magnetic, just like <laughs> Very good. So when did you start on this? Uh, how, how this morning, it's about this morning. Blimey, well, Governor well, and his lady Monday, wife. And the day after right, and a bit of, a bit so of Sunday. You yeah. then, for all those those of us who are old enough to remember, you are today's Rex Hunt. I've never quite been described as that, but, that, but that's right. Do you still that's have right, the hat yes. with the feathers? Then? Oh, indeed, indeed. The uniform gets worn about five or six times a year, probably. Are there any vacancies? Because I'm a bit old for getting blisters now, and I think Highly I'm, selective. a hat with Highly feathers. Highly selective. Oh. Very rigid. Very oh, rigorous, what a rather. Shame. Very rigorous, but. Oh well. <laughs> but have you seen the garden at <laughs> Government House? Now there's no. a challenge. There's no. a yeah. Well, you must come and have a have a look at it. Excellent. That looks complicated. Look at that. Straight down the middle. The person who made this hospital was a geographer. It's exactly north-south. Hurrah! The precise alignment of my compass rose feature along the axis of the garden means that the four geezers can be sighted neatly towards each corner. Digging the holes for them through the dry, compacted peaty soil is not such a doddle, though. 
You know, the way you do your makeup could really take <laughs> off. <laughs> I'm serious, I mean, you know, this could be a new trend here. Charlie, can you just lift up? <laughs> Have you seen this other nifty idea with the compass? You see those two flat sides there? Yeah. They fit on there, and then you see that little spirit level in there? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And adjust it from the back so that the bubble is right on that black mark. Is that a little bubble? Yeah. So, now, I can go around and check now that they're all at the same lean, because they should all be with the mark That's on the bubble. That's a clever tool. Unbelievably, they're all level. Well, not level, they're all unlevel to the same degree. And to keep them that way, they're getting set in a dry concrete mix that'll take up moisture slowly and set them firm. But for tonight, as the stiff breeze that circles the Southern Ocean freshens, we're propping them firmly. Are you all right? What do you think? I've never had so much muck in my eyes. It's so difficult to see. It's absolutely brilliant. What do you think? Is that sure? it's, it's, it's magnificent. Nine o'clock start tomorrow? Oh, yes. That makes sense. Right, would you rather start earlier? A little bit earlier, maybe. Upstate. Half past eight. Upstate. Half past eight. That's right. Okay. I'll be here. Well, See you tomorrow. Right. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye. You've got a moustache. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> On a summer's morning in Stanley, it's hard to imagine this is the same place that we saw on TV during the dark days of the conflict. There's a new prosperity based on income from managing the island's fishing grounds and a lasting gratitude to all those who secured the future of these islands. And our arrival has even inspired Granny to do some weeding. She's not the only one galvanised into action this morning. Our undercover man in the Falklands, Norman, is here, and so is John Farrow, Charlie's headmaster. Emma Edwards, Norma's daughter and deceiver, has brought her partner Drew, too. Tommy's framing out me compass rose, the point of which will come clear soon. Bill, shovel. Thank you. And I'm going to entrust you with my trowel. Thank you. And daughter of Madam Tootsie. Tootsie Serena. Thank you. Yes. Oh, one other tip. Before you bed them in, the stones, if you dip them in a bucket of water, that should help the adhesion between the stones and the mortar. Come to bond, yep, OK. Yeah. So I'll get you a bucket of water right. and a pair of knee pads for your knees, dear, OK? Very kind of you. Um, would there by any chance be a glass of champagne in there? Well, if there is, you won't see me for at least a couple of hours. Some people we haven't seen for 36 hours are our forces liaison officers. <laughs> ah, Rob! Hi, Charlie. Sue! Hi, Charlie. 
Where were you yesterday? Playing in the helicopter, I suppose. No, no, it was yeah. so windy yesterday, the road was closed. It was blowing 50 knots at Mount Pleasant, and I'm afraid the road was closed, so we couldn't come and help you yesterday. All right. Can I, I introduce you to Davey? You didn't Hi, meet Davey. him. Hi, Davey. How you doing? All right. And, and you know Sue from, uh, from the helicopter. Tom. Yes, lots of trenches to dig there at the moment, because for the cable for all the water features. So, trench digging. Are you good? Excellent. <laughs> Army. Uh, I'd like Army. to hear that. Great experience of that. Thank I know you. they're not big, but it's a narrow channel and there's a pickaxe over there if you want to just go along and get all the loose stuff out. No problem. Okay, right. good. Good day. However sophisticated defence systems become, every soldier can dig in and this mini trench for the pump cables can be considered job done. Hold on, Will. That's rather handsome. You all right? Yeah. Wow. Well, I need this to determine the height, don't I? The height? Is that similar to the width? People Rep. in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. No, shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> shouldn't throw stones, exactly what I said there. It always irritates me when people say sixth. He came in sixth. He came in sixth. It's six, isn't it? Not sick. Well, he came in after the fifth one. <laughs> <laughs> Are any of your children unruly at school? Really? Are really you one of those unruly. nice headmasters or are you one of those? I'm mean. like Victor Meldrew. <laughs> 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 right, finish your donut then. Mm. If you just go up to that ridge of soil for the moment, that's it. Seems to be lying down quite well. It does, doesn't it? It's not mm. been too bad at all. It was your influence as a headmaster, you see. <laughs> so what happens if you let go of it, then? Oh, fab! Fantastic. I just have to chivvy these boys and girls along. About halfway-ish. Yeah, it looks like the middle to me. Yeah. yeah. And I won't be cruel and say you've got to take your boots off because it looks like it will take you a lot longer than it would me <laughs> with all those laces. I've got my fashion victim socks on. Lovely. Why do we need so much liner then, Charlie, if we're only going to have a small fountain in the middle of this? Well, hopefully, the, the jet will be about two foot, but because it's so windy here, oh. it's going to carry, so I need all the liner underneath to run the water back in. Mm. On a really windy day, though, it's not going to be on. I think they're going to have to turn them off. OK. Because it gets quite windy here. It does I've indeed, noticed. yeah. <laughs> like yesterday. Was yesterday unusual to be that windy and close the road? It does get windy in the summer, yes. Um, it was 50 knots at MPA, and we, we closed the road for safety reasons because the vehicles can get blown off the road. So it's, it's safer it's safer not to drive at all <laughs> under those conditions. Yeah. And do you fly when it's like that? The aircraft limits vary, but um, yeah, there is a need to fly uh, all the time. But uh, for road safety, we close the road. OK, well, it's more to time. Put my shoes back on. Where do you want it? Um, just round the edge. I think I'm going to need several. This one. Can I borrow a trowel as well? You can. I'm done. So what are you doing now? All I need now is you to go around and tell me I've got east and west at the wrong side. <laughs> Very confusing in the Falklands because you see where the sun is? That's north, because we're in the southern hemisphere. And if you use this as a sundial, you'll see that it's one o'clock. More than halfway through the garden making time and Tommy is still furiously fabricating the focal point of the garden. Right, OK. No sign yet of him laying any of the three paved areas that he ought to have finished by tonight in order to make them safe to walk on tomorrow. You all right there, Willie? Well, I wouldn't like to stay here for the rest of the day holding this lump of wood like. <laughs> <laughs> There's a gap there, is there? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> the plan for tomorrow is to bring Norma through here on her way to a reception at Government House. Her husband, Roger, will fly her from Fox Bay, especially for the reception, but like all the best laid plans. Alan? Hi. Sir. Good to see you again. How are you? How are you? Great well. day, isn't it? Super. Oh, brilliant. Well, um, 
bit of bit of bit of work to be done because uh, Norma yes. is a bit reluctant to sort of come into a, a reception on a Sunday. Can understand that. She's <laughs> so out. So she's in West not going to come back. Well, that that has got to be worked at. I mean, I have great confidence, and I'm sure you have great confidence. <laughs> I have great so confidence we'll in off. the governor. The what I've got to do. I mean, you could be making a kind of uh, a program called End of a Career. But instead, I'm going to phone Norma. She doesn't ever trust what any diplomat says, and I'm going to have to say to her, Norma, trust me, come to my party. Norma, great to be in touch with you. How are you? <coughs> Bit of a problem, um, but uh, I think, uh, you know, you've got the, the invitation, haven't you, tomorrow? Oh, I chose that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I mean, Roger can fly. I mean, it's great. It's great weather, isn't it? Perfect shot. Linda would love to see you as, as well. I mean, you know, she hasn't uh, seen you for a long time. Well, last week, yeah, she did. It's true. You go in position. <laughs> This is all a bit difficult, really. Well, Norma or not, it looks like Tommy's tower is ready for erecting. <laughs> you have to admire the persistence of a British diplomat in a corner, don't you? Well, um, you know, what can I say, Norma? Alan? Yes. Have oh, you got a moment? Sorry. Let's, uh, what's this? Liverpool Cathedral or, or, or Millennium Dome? You're right. You spotted it, yes. <laughs> Paddy's wig Inspiration. I think I've got good news for you. Right? I think we've got good news. I've been on the phone to, uh, to Norma. Yeah. And I think for the purpose of uh, today, she trusts me. So I think we'll, uh, we'll have a So she a will come back. Start. I'm pretty sure of that. If you couldn't do it, as a diplomat, <laughs> nobody could do it. No, right. <laughs> OK. Thank you very much. Well, we'll see you as well tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Look forward to that. Wonderful. See Thank you. you. OK. Cheers. Bye. Well, if you've been to Liverpool, you'll see the inspiration for this. Liverpool Cathedral, the Catholic Cathedral, known as Paddy's Wigwam, um, with that lump coming up through the middle of the, the outside crown-shaped piece. It was very nice of the governor to recognise that, wasn't it? This is a sandstone from West Falkland, right? That's right, from Fox Bay. It's actually called the Fox Bay Sandstones. And uh, it's about 340 million years old. It's nice gear, but very hard. The quarry was originally opened for the gravestones in the graveyard up here. There was an old boy called Tommy Braxton, who used to be our stonemason. And uh, he actually made his own gravestone. And he carved it Thomas Braxton in 1908 and then left it. And he died in 1989, because we we're all starting to worry well, if he ended up living until 1990. <laughs> None of us would be able to put the yet nine in. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? It is. Poor old Tommy working his life out and then you wash him dead before 1990. <laughs> Anyhow, are we going to put some paving down or are we just... Yeah. What are you doing here? Well, I've come to help. You've got two uh, girls at once. Uh, Doesn't that just make your dream uh, come true? Uh, <laughs> well, I can't help Alan and I can't put me grids on me concrete. Well, I've got to tell you something now. I'll I want it to keep confidential. <laughs> Alan's actually beyond help. <laughs> <laughs> Just a quarter of an inch too low. Shall I leave it? No. Last slab of the day. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. No. Oh, you were just being picky now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Thank you and good night. What is it about a bunch of elephant seals that puts me in mind of Tommy Walsh in the morning?
These magnificent beasts are on Sea Lion Island, an unmissable excursion. But I'm off to Stanley's Garden Centre to see Tim Miller to get our plants at last. I've seen this right. tree looping all over the place. It is, it is. is. Oh, it's it's is. Yeah, no, it does really, really well, very well in the Falklands. The, is the it a good long looping. season of flower? It is, yes, yeah. And if they flower fairly early, we find that if you then deadhead them, you can actually get a, like a sort of a second, a, a second flush of flowers uh, um, coming. I won't as well. get one they're on really the plane good. though. They really are bonny there. <laughs> no, they're really good. Oh. Anyway, yes. Here's what we've got uh, in mind for uh, for you. Oh, we're looking at an English country garden, yeah. really, aren't we? Yeah. Lavender cotton, Santa Lina, hebes, New Zealand, mm -hmm. fuchsias, yes. lupins, yes. and Bodleia butterfly bush. Yes. Now that's the thing. Many butterflies in the Falklands. Uh, there are two. There are two types. Um, they don't come out that often with, with our windy weather, but you, you do see them out on a, on a nice sunny day. Yeah, again, as you say, it's the wind. Yes, guess, which yes, creates the problem. Yes, yes, we have we have no bees though, unfortunately, which does does sort of limit limit the pollination of flowers. No uh, bees. On no, the no bees. No bees. No. How long have you been living here? I'm a native. I'm an islander. Yes, my, my roots go back um, about 160 odd years to the, the early 1840s. Well, that's when they were first colonised by the Brits. That's right. Yes, my great great grandfather. You know, he was one of the the first batch of Chelsea pensioners who came down here in the 1840s. But those Chelsea pensioners were not the age of our Chelsea pensioners. Oh no, um, not elderly gentlemen with their Zimmer frames <laughs> walking up the beach off a sailing ship. <laughs> <laughs> no, in those days they were in their thirties and forties, sort of people from the from the Crimea War and uh, pension uh, pension, early. yeah. And, and have you always been happy here? Then you've never felt the need to sort of fly away a bit. Uh, no, I, I, I've spent a fair fair amount of time in England. I went to school and then college in England, but I, I'd always, you know, my roots are here, and I've always wanted to come back. As one one person once said to me, "Where you're born isn't really where, where what matters; is where you want to die that matters." I guess you've chosen. I think so, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, look, I'll give you a hand then. We'd better get this lot down there. Yep, that's and right. And start greening up the fork. Yes, yes, we had indeed. All right, OK. okay. I'll okay. grab a bottle of water. Sure, then. Mm -hmm. OK. Unlike the islanders, for many, like the soldiers who put up this road sign, the Falklands will always be a very, very long way from home. I got. Hey, hey, plants at long last. You still recognise them? It seems so long since we saw one, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I know what that plant is. What? That's a lobelia. A lobelia? Not even remotely close. OK. It ends in IA. Oh. Budlia. That's what I meant. The one that grows out of the parapet walls on roofs and everything. Yeah, London bomb sites. That's it. Great coloniser. Good for butterflies, except in the Falklands, I've learned they only have two butterflies. <laughs> and no bees. No bees? No bees. Oh. There's no bees then, it's uglier. <laughs> Casting her pearls among the swine, Charlie can console herself that her water features are coming on apace. <laughs> Granny, how are you? Oh, not too bad, not too bad. We've got plants going in now. It gets oh, more exciting. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> So have you heard from Norma at all? She rang me yesterday. Oh, yes. And she said that the governor had rang her. Yeah. Wanting her to come in this afternoon, you know, around... Yeah, the... what was her reaction? She said, I don't want to come in. She said, I've got a meeting on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he would like her because there were people coming that he wanted her to meet. But he didn't say who? He didn't say who. <laughs> so. so she is coming? Oh, I suppose oh, Roger will make her come. And make her come, oh, good. Was there any particular reason that you piled all the soil there rather than on the garden, where we need it? Well, I thought it might make an interesting debating point from your point of view, actually. What, so we can move it again? Well, I didn't want it here, because well, that's why what Why can't you put it over there? 
Well, because as I'm shambling, that was there, see? It can be moved later. <laughs> oh, great, yeah. I've got more important things to do. <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> Round one. <laughs> Happy in your work, Emma. Yes, this is quite good fun, actually. I've never <laughs> done this before. You're very easily pleased. No, well, I've gotten myself a new house, and um, it's, my garden's a bit like a building site at the moment, so at least this way, I'm actually learning a few new techniques, and I hope I might actually be able to put some of them to good use in a few years' time. <laughs> From all around us, the King Edward VII Memorial Hospital sticks to its routines, but there's definitely a distraction this visiting time. Definitely diamond geezer. <laughs> the peat soil has really dried out hard. It isn't too full of rubbish, but it certainly needs loosening up with lots of digging. <laughs> Well prepared, it's like planting in a grow bag, but it will need watering well. So how do you come to be working for Tim, Jan? Well, I'm married to him. <laughs> oh, that's a good reason why. It's never worked for me, though. But... No, it'd be more profitable if I was just working for him. <laughs> Are you a native Falklander as well, then? No, I've been here ten years. I come from Shropshire. So where did you meet? Um, at a game fair in Shropshire. I was with my cub pack, and he was just passing through and we met them. So you were clearly very strongly attracted to one another then, weren't you? Yes, I suppose so. And did he drop you a line then from the Falklands and say, come over? Yes. And then I came over and saw what the Falklands was like in the summer, and I thought, I could hack this. And then I came over to see what the Falklands was like in the winter, and it was better than Shropshire, so I thought, I'll come down here. So here you are. Yeah. What a lovely story. <laughs> Getting nice and sunny and warm. Two o'clock, and after all that fuss about the Prince of Wales's holly, we found we didn't need to move it in the end at all. So I'm just making sure it gets a good drink. So here we are, sir. Going terribly well. Didn't need to move it. But thank you for the permission. You've now got a fountain by the side of you. Well, look, in three hours' time, you'll have a complete garden. Mind you, I'm not overconfident. Planting's going quite well. We've got a wonderful army, literally, in battle dress, planting there. But there's half that paving to do down there, all that paving to do down there, and still a rooftop on that. In three hours... Ah! More and more ground force helpers are pressed into service, but there is a limit to just how quickly these heavy slabs can be laid, and Tom is at it. Right, Hold the wheel, that's it now. Might be a bit too much. This is getting some task. We've got seas of gravel. We've got four water features. We've got a cathedral in the middle of the garden. About 100 square metres of natural paving. And we get one extra day to do it. This job gets harder and harder. It's 
all right, but I'm glad you don't come every week. <laughs> Norma's Airborne. Alan? Yeah? I've um, just heard, actually, that uh, Mum and Dad are now coasting out of the West, and so that means they're about 20 minutes out from MPA, which means they're about 40 minutes away. But not here? No, not here. They're going to go down to my house first to change. So what time will they come here? They're meant to be dropping eggs off for Granny at about 5 o'clock before they go to Government House. Now, does your father know not to come here before 5 o'clock? Dad knows not to come here before 5 o'clock. Right, we've got an hour and a half to finish. Fine. Get, get on with your grouting. I'll get on with There's your grouting. There's nowhere we can stop them, is there? So we'll stop with it then. Yep. Right. Hour and a half. Half an inch out. Not if they're all together, are they? Well, look at that. Yeah, Paul. What? Yeah. Well, two are screwed on. Fifteen minutes before she gets here. I've almost finished my painting. The boys are taking a little longer. I might never get out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've just become a feature. <laughs> I can't get out now. I got in. <laughs> no, Will. You want me in it? As it keep pushing there. That's great. Keep the pressure up. All right. What's right. with the sawdust? <laughs> I've made a fatal error. I got in through here because it's tapered. And I can't get out. You got in. Let me pull the other side, Tommy. Hang on. Oh! Thank <laughs> you. Not a moment too soon. They're here. They're just passing the war memorial. She's coming! Outside the front of the house now. Yeah, no, 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 no. She's coming in that way. Come round here. Oh, stupid, <laughs> stupid boy. Hello, Mum. You look rather nice. Where's Willie? Where's Willie? I don't know. What's going on? Come this way. Come on, keep coming. I don't know what all those vehicles are for, but anyway, come up What's here. What's going on? Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> Isn't this wonderful? Oh, my goodness. So, Norma. Who did this? Oh, my God! <laughs> How lovely to see you. You've been, oh. you've been ground forced. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> All the kids as well. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? When we arrived, you were still here. We were locked in our hotel rooms, oh, so you thing. couldn't see us. So we wouldn't have to have when you went away. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is marvellous. And we've got a water feature. We've got four. 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 four of them. Four of them. <laughs> <laughs> Calming gardening, isn't it? This is a public garden where patients and visitors should be able to enjoy the paths, the seats and the vistas, and on calm days, the four geezers. A present from us four geezers, me, Tommy, Charlie and Will, oh, and HRH, to the very special people of the Falkland Islands. I'll put my best bib and tucker on, just in case there's somebody important I've got to meet, and I'm glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> Even though there wasn't. <laughs> I'm just absolutely gobsmacked and delighted, and thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure. Would you like a glass or something? Oh, I'd love a glass or something. That sounds nice. <laughs> we were so sure you must have known. I don't know how you managed to keep it to all. <laughs> Usually people know before you know yourself. You, know? <laughs> you get told what you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sit quietly, Norma. It's <laughs> <laughs> hard for me. <laughs> ah, what a time we've had. From the place with white sand, turquoise sea, blue skies, wonderful weather, seals and penguins. 
That's the Falklands. Cheers! Bye bye. Cheers! <laughs> Cheers to Grandfather. <laughs> Alan, I've just got a small momentum for you from uh, all the service people here in the Falklands. Uh, I, know oh. you, I know you collect these. Oh, uh, you this is a little, a little memento. Thank this you is very a much. For your boat. <laughs> from the British forces overseas, desire to write. Hey! I'll fight off this black